I'm John Ochins, and welcome to Schooling Around. Today we conclude our journey through the Oxford International Residence Academy. Last time we learned about the kids, where they come from, how they qualified, what the rules are, and how they made the transition from home to here. Today we focus on their home away from home, the people who volunteer to welcome them in and guide them from being guests to family. And later, we'll get some final thoughts from the students about how they would improve the program and what their goals are from here. Join us for part two of the Oxford International Residence Academy on Oxford Television's Schooling Around. Congratulations, OCTV, as the 2014 winner of the American Legion's Best Electronic Media Award, symbolizing your efforts to provide meaningful coverage of veterans' issues and patriotic activities, as well as the American Legion. Mary Sovis lives in Oxford with her husband and four children. She has been involved with the Academy since its inception in 2010. She explains the different levels of host family involvement. There's two different avenues you can take. You can sign on to take a student for a year, or you can do a winter camp where they come for two weeks. And I think, believe we did the first winter camp. And we've done a winter camp ever since then, and then we had a student for about a year and a half with us. And then this coming school year, I am so excited, we're taking in twins. Okay, now we'll get to that in a minute. You talk <laughs> about the winter camp. Is that kind of a stick-your-toe-in-the-water sort of thing? Uh... Yes. It, it, I would say yes and no. It's different because it's kind of like having a guest. You, you can have a blast. <laughs> but when they came, come and stay and live with you, they're part of the family. Uh -huh. guest versus family and we had two young boys oh my gosh I had some of my best memories with these boys and they're like we want to come and live with you and I'm like well living here is different <laughs> how did you and your family what was the road you took to arrive at that decision oh goodness my youngest okay I have three girls and a son um, my youngest actually wants to be an exchange student she wants to go to Australia and I go, why don't you go to China, honey? <laughs> I would prefer you to go there. <laughs> um, so the kids actually brought it to my attention. And did you? Yeah, probably in 2010, I may have called you. And, you know, in the very, it, at the very conception of this program, we didn't have a full-time exchange program. We only had a camp. And our first camp was actually my first year in Oxford. And so oh. I was desperately seeking out any responsible, involved families. What year would that have been? 2010. 10, okay. Yeah, the 10, 11 school year. And uh, Mary's name came across my desk as someone, I didn't know anyone here yet. So um, well, no, obviously she was you. a good contact because she stuck <laughs> with us for four years. So... So how did the discussion go in your household before you made that final decision? Well, we, we, have, we have family dinners. Our dinners will last an hour to an hour and a half. We really do. It's just how we communicate. And so we were sitting there, and um, I said, well, guys, I have an adventure that I'd like us to take on. And um, at that time, so let's see, my oldest is now her third year starting college, so she would have been a junior or senior. And they all jumped on board. They're like, oh, it sounds great. And my, they were all taking Chinese and elementary you know, school and everything. And we, we just really, we liked it. So then we took a child every year. And then the year we were thinking of not taking one, Jill contacted me and she goes, Mary. And I'm like, oh, I was going to take a vacation. <laughs> And that's when we took our student in for the year and a half, and I would have never done anything different. I just absolutely, it's like raising your own kids. There's pros and cons to it, but the, the pros totally outweigh anything. Okay, so when these kids come in, they, they arrive in your household when? Is it in September or August? August. Or? Okay. A week before school starts. All right, and they are there until June? 
Yep. Pretty much so, huh? Yep. Some of the students choose to go home during the Christmas break. Okay. Um, but we actually encourage students not to do that whenever possible because that is one of the most culture-rich times in an American yes. home for them to experience American yeah. life. And, and my student actually went home because her visa was a little bit different. She did not come in August. She came in December. So her visa went from December to December. So she had to go home at Christmas break to renew her visa because it's only for one year. And my entire family was very saddened that she couldn't be with us for the holidays. I can imagine. So, um, and then we've had both her parents have been to our house. We've had dinner with them. We've met them. They actually invited us back to China for the month of July, my entire family. Wow. Yeah. Tell me about <laughs> some of your wow moments, good or bad, that you've had in having these kids staying with you? Um, the good is when we had the two boys. <laughs> we, um, I had two, let's see, 12 and 13 year old boys with us. I opened this huge bin and it's filled with Nerf guns and their eyes <laughs> just lit up. So I grabbed my son who was 18 at the time and I said, okay, Grab your weapons. We had, we just had everything, and we took our entire home and we made it into a, the two boys against me and my son, and we were just having a blast. And how old were the kids that were staying with you at the time? Twelve and thirteen. Twelve and thirteen. Twelve and thirteen, and me and my son were having a blast, and I would do that with my kids. We would turn our house into a Nerf, Nerf war zone, and the boys just loved it. And we took them out, you know, we took them on the tractor and. Um, sledding and when the boys were here for camp one of the boys mothers were here also and another teacher we had them over to our house for dinner we took them sledding we played games just really loved it really loved it um with my student who stayed with us um the longest the best time i i gave her horseback riding lessons and watching her get on that horse and just she was just so enthralled and having her friends come over her mother came over from China and we made real Chinese dumplings. It took us all, all day to make them and then we had all her friends over for dinner. And wow. I absolutely loved it. Absolutely loved it. And then Josie, which was our student, her best time was dinner time when we would just sit around the table and talk. She she would miss it. And she when she left, she goes, I'm gonna miss this. And I said, Josie, have dinner with your parents. Continue this tradition. Tell them you want them to have dinner with you. What are some of the challenges? They, their culture is so different than ours. And they're coming to us at such a really tough time in their age. I mean, think about it. Josie probably came over at 16. You know? Um, what are some of the hardest... What's 16-year-old in their house? What right? are some of the hardest things that they have to get used to? What are the biggest changes they have to make? Changes is how um, this this is what I got from Josie um, they go to school and then they study and then they socialize okay in my kids life school is an interference to their socialization <laughs> <laughs> really <laughs> they go to school to see their friends Josie would go to school to learn um, she would want to come home and go right down to her room. And I'm like, you know, honey, no, I would like you up here. So then she would bring her computer up there. I would close her computer and then try to get her involved. It's just, it's just different. And, um, and you can't expect them to just jump in. It's, it's, it's just different. Well, I would expect if my daughter went over there, she'd be like, well, when are we gonna talk? When, when are we gonna do this? When are, and I'd have to, it slow, mm. babe. <laughs> how, how about the, the language situation? How did that work out? I felt that Josie and all the kids we had spoke, spoke very well um, English. I could understand them. They'll laugh and say, Mom, don't try to speak Chinese because you can't. <laughs> um, even the boys, there was a few communication differences, but to me I see that as as an adventure you you just it's another hurdle you learn from it and then you can teach how you can communicate in different ways uh, Josie told us when she first came especially at dinner we spoke too quickly for her so she would nod and laugh and we laughed 
because she thought that's what she was supposed to do, but she had no idea what we were laughing at. So, and I think one of the best instances also, because you got a boy with four sisters now, he turned to me one day and he goes, Josie's my sister, right, Mom? And I go, yeah, Michael, he is. And he goes, Josie, you are so ugly today. <laughs> and that's what brothers do. And she loved it, though. She loved it. She goes, I've been accepted. That's great. <laughs> and he didn't mean it, but that. Okay, so you've had some practice at this now. How many years have you been since 2010? Well, just four. Four years. Mm -hmm. What are you doing differently now that you've learned from your past experience with regard to these kids? You know, I'm not doing anything differently. I'm accepting a child into my home. I'm loving them unconditionally. And my goal is to help them succeed in their lifetime. So with Josie, I said, there's no speaking Chinese in our home, honey. You want to go to American college, you need to learn English. So I don't mean to be mean, but you need to learn English. And so if you're struggling, struggle here. Because college, you're going to have a diff whole lot of struggles going on, and I would prefer this not to be one of them. Were you a teacher yourself at some point in your life? I homeschooled for a, uh, about five years. But no, I just... These kids are, are our greatest asset, and I want to give them all the tools that they can have in succeeding because their kids are the next greatest asset that we have in any country. Okay. If I was to come to you and ask or say, I'm thinking of doing what you do, give me some advice. Don't have any preconceived notions of how it's going to be. It's like being a parent for the first time. What you think it's going to be is totally different than what it is. Don't think just because you have a couple setbacks that it's a horrible experience because those only make you stronger. Uh, and there's going to be setbacks. And go into this just knowing openly that you're accepting someone in your house to help them do better in their life. That's really... put. You know, you have to see it as a family, but it's really just opening up and unconditionally being there for that child. Mm -hmm. Good, because they're struggling. They're, it's a huge difference for them, and you have to help, not force them through that, but guide them through that. You have to help them become adults. Jill Lamond continues the conversation on the challenges of being a host family. Well, that's something hand. that we talk about yep. orientation um, <laughs> that you know a word of wisdom I got actually from one of the first host families uh, the mother Donna talked to me and she said I just say it's just like when we used to foster it's just like when we you know have had any other kids in our house for the first week or two you're a guest we'll yeah. we'll clean up after you we'll fold your towels you know we'll we'll tidy up in the bathroom when you make a mess or you know what have you pick up your dishes but after those first couple of weeks, you better catch on because you're part of the family. And so if you don't do what you're supposed to do, you know, the hammer's going to come down on you too. You're going to be grounded or you're going to make the rules known for the first couple of weeks and then hold them to it. Yeah. And I think that's something that Mary specifically does that really helped Josie and any of her students to feel a part of the family is because you're held to the same, you know, expectations as family members. Whether it's homework or it's, you know, respect or chores, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. So that's something we really encourage all the families to do is set your expectations, make them known, communicate them clearly, and then enforce them. Treat them like a teenager. Mm -hmm. and, they, and they are teenagers. Okay. They are teenagers, but teenagers are way far away from what they know. Chinese student Edward Guan tells us why he chose to enter the program. I would like to try something new. I would like to expand my horizon, and that program is perfect for me. What, tell me a little bit about the program as you see it, how it's related to your education. It's like, um, it's not easy for Chinese people to come to America for st to study in high school. And most, I know most Chinese students co go to foreign countries to study after college like that and th this program gave me a, a shortcut 
So you wanted to study in college in America anyway? Was that kind of what was in your horizons back in China? Yeah. Before you left? I did. Where do you hope to go to college here? Syracuse. Syracuse University? Yep. What would you like to study? Economics. Good for you. Um, any recommendations for younger kids considering the program? Okay. My is try to think yourself as an American student. Forget about you are a Chinese student. What surprised you most after being here for a while? About being in America? There was... Actually, I didn't thought American food could be that good. <laughs> <laughs> you never thought you could eat two Coney dogs at one city. <laughs> Before I came here, I thought American people eat burgers and hot dogs and pizzas every day and now I found out a long time ago I found out people eat a lot of healthy food too. Thank goodness for that. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, what about cultural differences? Anything that really surprised you? Yeah, I thought the, the American culture is uh, a kind of European culture I thought before I came here. Now I found that the American culture is a uh, kind of integrated. People move from all over the world to into the United States, and this culture is colorful and interesting. Student Rudy He attended our sister school in China. She tells us how she got into the academy. Okay, because uh, we don't have a lot of that kind of school in China, at least in my hometown, we don't have a lot of international school. So I took a test to get into the school and then uh, I met some teachers and then um, my parents decided to send me to the school because uh, they think it's I can get a lot of special experience and I get a chance to go to a foreign country and just explore my study. So. Were you hoping to go to college in the United States anyway? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And, and where are you going to school after this? Uh, Michigan State University. To Michigan State? Was it difficult learning English and adapting to the culture when you got over here? I think so, it is. When did you start learning English? Uh, from elementary school. So you had been studying it for a long time before you came here yes. then? Yes. Okay. Any feelings about cultural differences? Anything that was tough for you to adapt to? Yeah, it was. it's always hard from the beginning, but as long as you jump in the culture, you learn a lot of things, you talk to people, you, you're going to learn a lot of things and you, you can feel I'm really a part of this culture right now. So it's it's hard, but I mean, it's going to be tough, but it, you will feel much better after you spend time in here. And yeah. Any advice to other kids who are younger than you considering getting into the program? I think language is really important and then the class you took in uh, China is really important too. It depends how, how, what kind of class you take in China, and and make you like you study well in uh, America. If you had to do it all over again, would you do anything differently? Um, I don't know. I may take more AP classes. <laughs> take more AP classes in in the high school. Yeah, or I may just study harder in China. So I will be better in America. But it's not that you had a rough time here, is it? Yeah. <laughs> what are you pursuing or, or intend to pursue at Michigan State? Uh, I'm going to major in uh, supply chain management. They have really good program here. And what do you hope to do after you get your degree in that? I'm, I don't know. I'm not sure yet. I want to major in German too so I can go to some European c countries so I can work there and then live there probably. So you want to continue to be a world traveler. I asked student Nancy Liu what she would change. How's our visa? Like this is a public high school so we couldn't have the high school visa for more than one year. And um, we need to study some college course in order to get, um, to be legal here. 
So if I can do, I want to have more choice for the college classes in high school. Senior Jeff Zhang tells us of his plans for the future. Before I actually have so far as new uh, mechanical engineering, but I'm really interested in nuclear engineering. I want to build like a nuclear plant later and do, do some more discovery in nuclear engineering. Actually. Where do you plan on going to college? Uh, Catherine University. Okay, so you're going to stay here in Michigan then, aren't you? Yeah, show my loyalty. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Where would you like to go after that? Mm. Well, my plan is like I so far I will take co-op jobs in Kellering and uh, hopefully I can get into GM or Rockwell. That's the two company in my top list, top in the top of my list, and I will try to like that will be my first job maybe after college, and then I will get a master degree maybe in University of Michigan or maybe in other schools, and then I want to work for Boeing later or maybe for others. Uh, big companies for engineering. So you may well end up staying in the United States for quite a while. Mostly, yeah. But if I'm, sometimes I may change, you know, change into I want to work for BMW some days, I will fly to Germany. I asked some of the other students about any changes they would recommend. Hopefully I can be here after, like, even before I graduate from media school, so I can study here, like, from or freshman even. So you feel that it might not be a bad idea to have your whole high school career yeah. Yeah. in the same place. Nancy Lou? Well, probably the same thing. Like, um, but I just come here like a half year late. Like, my, after I graduated from middle school, I stayed in China in the sister school for only half year and I, I came here. So probably yeah, if I had a choice, I'm probably going to come here directly after I graduate from middle school. Mm -hmm. uh, other one thing I really want to change is like, the first Chinese group came here, they only got five people. The second group, they got five people, but as long as uh, more people came, like the last group, they came like they're about 20, 30 or 20 people. And I heard there will be more. Like We, we want to experience in the foreigner because we want in a totally different situation as it was in China. So, but if more Chinese people will come, we'll get more people together, we'll never feel the real experience. In the and United with States. the new um, student center that they're planning on building, that should make things even more interesting, huh? Yeah. 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 I can't believe it. Uh, I think, mm, I, I came here it's two years, but I think the three year will be perfect. Uh, we have the three years for middle school in China. If you come here right after middle school and uh, go to high school here for three years, I think that will be a perfect time. In our coverage of being a host family, the one area we haven't touched on is the financial. Jill Lamone tells more. Something we don't talk about much, but, but we probably should mention, is the financial nitty gritty here. Uh, now, obviously, this isn't the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, but the fact of the matter is there is some reimbursement for these kids mm -hmm. so that we don't have parents going deeply into the hole and in the process of... When we first started this and we were reaching out to families, we, I heard from several families, I would love to do it, but I just don't think we could afford it. Or my family would really be interested in doing that, but I don't feel that we'd be able to take the student to see local sites or you know, really give them the kind of experience that, that we would want to because it'd be cost prohibitive for us. And so we met with our partners very early on and decided that it was important that families get a reimbursement for transportation, housing costs, and, and any other incidentals. Now the students come with health insurance, okay. that's already paid. The students' school lunches are already part of their package. Um, but beyond that, breakfast and dinner every evening, getting a student to and from school if they're not taking the school bus. Many of them are involved in after school activities, so there's a huge commitment you know, in that sense. It was important for us to show the, the parents that we understand that commitment and that we value it and monetarily as well. And so um, our families right now receive $125 a week paid, a, a paid bi-weekly um, to reimburse them for a total of $500 per month. Um, 
And that money, if you're if you're doing this the right way, and I think Mary would agree, that money should be going directly to the student, and that money should really be benefiting their experience and just you know supplementing your home. Um, right. It's really not an income if you're using it correctly. Who is the ideal parents that you'd be looking for for this situation? I mean, in terms of not not just who they are, what they do. But where they live? How far away from school do you want them to be? That's an uh, interesting question. We've accepted parents from all over School of Choice. We've had parents, you know, up in Metamora. We've had parents, you know, right in the heart of Oxford. Really, it's the family's level of commitment that that matters to me. Um, I don't think there is any one face of a host family. We've had families where their parents, uh, the parents' children, are adults now, and you know, they're retired and. They just kind of felt like their home was empty and they wanted to open it up to, to a Chinese student. Um, we've had families where they have elementary schoolers who are in the Chinese program and they wanted someone to practice their Chinese with or someone to really learn the culture from. And we've had high school students uh, who, who wanted another sibling or again wanted practice with the language and the culture. Um, I think Oxford as a community is really progressive in that we understand the global citizenship piece of education and, and really recognize that you know this is one great big world and we're all pretty pretty connected um, so a lot of our families are, have students that are in language programs mm -hmm. and so you're aware we are opening up the program this year we're taking our first Mexican student um, we have opened it up to our sister school in Mexico and we hope to receive more students from Mexico and we also have independent students we had a student from Russia last year come through the program so um, it's not just a Chinese program it's just that that's where right. such a majority of our students are at this time you know the interest level is there on the other side of the globe yeah we're open as an international Academy to any student that would want to come here you know right um, that qualified you mentioned uh, one of your own children thinking oh. about going abroad mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you about that. Okay, we're, we're, we're talk, spending all this time talking about kids coming here. What about our kids going there? What are you seeing? From, and what's, what's on the horizon? From the very beginning of the program, it has always been our hope that this would be a real, true exchange. Right now, it's very one-sided, and we want to send our educators. Their educators come here quite frequently also. They're administrators to you know, learn about our education system. Oxford has had the opportunity to send quite a few of our educators and admin and school board members to China, but I really think we need to get more parents and more students there. And that is both the partners that we're working with, both of their goal. They've always invited us. It's that we're, we don't have the same amount of money and, and disposable income to send our students over there. Um, so that's really what we've been doing is coming up with creative ways for our students to afford it. And I think Chun Chun can speak. We have a, a few students who are considering even taking that opportunity this, this coming school year. Really? Mm -hmm. Actually, I was going to update you on that, but right after this meeting, uh, meeting with an Oxford High School student and her parents, this student is studying abroad in one of our sister schools in China this fall. So, Will she be the first? She will be the first. She will be there for one full semester, and we, at the moment, also have another OBA student, Oxford Virtual Academy student, who is interested in a short-term exchange. We're probably looking at uh, a month or so, and this student would also like to visit and study in China as soon as this fall. Aren't we having a, a Chinese, is it a winter camp coming up over there? Am I mistaken? I thought I heard something about that. Right. For uh, We originally uh, looked at this past spring to send a group of high school students who have taken a few years of Chinese uh, to our uh, sister schools in China for a camp experience. You are correct. So now we're uh, looking ahead to next year. Uh, if we can have a group of students to visit, that would be a shared goal uh, between the Aura team, the Oxford High School community, as well as our partner schools in China. President Dwight D. Eisenhower once said, the exchange of students should be vastly expanded. Information and education are powerful forces in the support of peace. Just as war begins in the minds of men, so does peace. Thanks to the students and teachers of the Oxford International Academy, to Russell Courier and Ryan Myers on cameras, and Kyle Snage at the controls, and you for watching. This is Oxford Community Television, keeping it local.